Morning everyone, Nick from Eat Smoke Fire here, cook number 22 maybe, I don't know. Um, lovely sunny day in Cambridge today, got my flip flops on so I should normally be deep frying if I was wearing the flip flops but I'm not. Um, I think it's uh, one of the guys in Cambridge brings that up every time. So anyway, um, so today is all about dirty cooking uh, or caveman style cooking. Uh, we had a request last week to do dirty steaks. Uh, and so today is going to be about everything dirty and I'm going to disappoint you at this stage and tell you I'm not going to cook a dirty steak. So there you go. Not the dirty steak you expect anyway. Um, so we're going to do the usual. We have back with us today, Andy. Hello. <laughs> Popped in looking after the camera so she'll be on the camera and we've got Helena who's on the keyboard. Morning. She'll be doing all the typing and answering your questions and noting them down. Um, so yeah, if you've got any questions, then ask away. Um, this is some a topic, I guess, that a lot of people haven't tried. They're sort of um, nervous about trying it. So don't be, is the, what I tell you. Um, it is a great way, a totally different way of cooking. Um, and it works brilliantly in the egg, but it also work on a, a normal, you know, campsite fire or something like that. So we're literally going to be cooking in the charcoal. So I will use one surface today. Um, I think that's it. And we're going to cook about four or five different dishes. So let's get cracking on. Um, and I'll tell you about them as we go. So this egg, it's all already up and warm. Keep diving, Andy. We've done it before, but just to remind you, We've got some dirty onions in there. So they've been in for about 20 minutes. They take a while, so I've just popped them in there. Got the egg nice and low. Um, and we're cooking them in the skins and then they will just caramelize inside. They go really sticky, really gooey, and they are gorgeous. And you may think for three of us, three onions is too much. It is, but you can t um, take it, a, take it um, cold and then add it to dishes and it's just delicious. Um, so we'll be doing that with them. So, on to the next dish. I have some beetroot here, skin's on. Uh, I've just cut the tops off and all I've done to these is I've steamed them. So I put them in a steamer for about 30 minutes and they're a little bit soft and we're gonna cook those. Now, uh, there's a very famous uh, chef, uh, Daniel Clifford, just down the road here, who serves um, beetroot exactly like this, done in the coals in his Michelin starred restaurant, two Michelin starred restaurant, um, and he serves it with um, a nitrogen frozen goat's cheese. So we're gonna do a take on that really. I haven't got a nitrogen freezer or whatever that looks like. You'll be probably amazed that that is a gadget I haven't got yet. Um, but no, Helen is saying no. Um, but yeah, we're gonna do this. So we're gonna use the same egg. So if I open it up, and all we're gonna do is pop, pop these, nestle them in the coals, Remind me where I put that little one because I'll probably lose it. So uh, we'll pop them in. And the idea is that we're going to get the, the outside skins of these. I don't want them, can you see it's quite hot in the middle? I'm just putting them around that. Um, I don't want to, to, um, uh, to get them too hot. But what we'll do um, is we'll keep turning those and we want the outside to go black. It's going to burn. It's going to get allow the inside to caramelize. And then when we serve it, we'll cut them in half and they'll scoop the middles out, which will all be gooey and nice and hope. Well, fingers crossed. Um, that's what we're trying to aim for, covered in stuff now. Right, so that's two things, two veg on there. Um, we're gonna do a third veg on there. Um, I've got them in a plastic bag um, because I need that plastic bag later, but we've just got two red peppers. So let's, uh, I'm gonna put these spoons on top of that. And what we're gonna do is grill these off. So what we want to do is blister the skins, soften them up, We'll then use that plastic bag to put them in there and it'll steam them. The skins will come off and we'll have some beautiful peppers. So just like you can do on the hob, we're going to put these in this egg. Okay. Um, so we'll do these. And I'll just have to remember to turn those every three or four minutes, something like that. Okay, that's a lot of veg. Um, a lot of you will be disappointed, I guess. Um, so the other two cooks. Three cooks, three more cooks, sorry, uh, we've got. We have um, uh, a top side of lamb. So uh, off the back leg of the lamb, bit of rump really. Um, I've just got it marinating. It's in some garlic, some lemon, some mint, a uh, bit of oil. 
uh, and the lemon juice. So we're, we're just giving that a little marinade. So we're gonna do that whole rump dirty. So we're gonna stick that on there. Now, I've never done one of these before, so I don't know how long it's gonna cook. Uh, I want it to be, I like my lamb to be a medium, uh, a medium rare. So we're gonna go for about 57 degrees when it's finished on that. Um, I'm guessing it's gonna take about 20 minutes, half an hour. So we'll give that a couple of minutes before we put that on and we'll get, we'll, we'll pop that in. I'm gonna use the meter today um, and use it dirty. I've never tried this. It may moan at me that it's too hot, but we'll try it. Um, basically, it's just a meat thermometer. One end will go into the meat. The other end will measure how close it is to the fire or on the fire. Um, I've seen me to do it on their site. So we're gonna use that just to, to measure that. So we'll pop that in there. So that's our first meat cut. We have, um, and I'm gonna go back and, um, I must wash my hands, got covered in beetroot. Um, but um, I'm gonna go back and tell you a little bit of a story about the second meat cut. And what we have from the Gog Farm Shop are some beautiful, and these could be beef. So I've just put a bit of mint on from the other one. But these are, and I'll wash my hands after this because I've touched them now, um, pork ribeyes. So it's not something you get that often uh, in the shops. It's not a cut we um, traditionally we, we have in Britain. Um, but you can use the, uh, you can ask your butcher to cut some pork ribeyes. Um, now essentially these are the same cut, same part of the animal as a beef ribeye. So you've got a bit of fat in the middle, got this lovely meat around it. I've got three of them there, one each for us. Uh, and we're gonna cook those as we would a steak. So if you want to do this at home with a steak, then follow, this technique is exactly the same. Um, the purpose of doing the pork ribeyes and the story bit is I started cooking these or I was introduced to cooking these with a guy um, called uh, Mark from Dingley Dell Pork. Now Dingley Dell is one of the top pork producers in the UK. They ship to top restaurants all over the world. And I had the pleasure of him coming and standing in the back of the Big Green Egg Taxi with me at the Gog Farm shop where these are from. Um, and we cooked pork ribeyes and we did them dirty. Um, so, and we also cooked them um, medium rare. So people are a bit wary of cooking pork like that because of trichinosis, the, the parasite um, that we all cook our pork, we all nuke our pork to kill. Um, what I learned from Mark that day is that there hasn't been a reported instance of the trichinosis uh, parasite within the UK for 45 years, something like that. So we've all been overcooking our pork because that's what our mums and dads taught us or whoever taught us. We've all been overcooking it um, because um, of that parasite and there's no need to do it. You can serve this just like you can a steak. It's no different. It's just as safe. Um, so. so a couple of people have had some horror stories with dirty cooking in the meat so they're just saying be Okay, perfect. Two people have said, have had horror stories of dirty cooking the meter. It does alarm you. It does tell you if it's gonna to get too hot and then you can take it out. It is a bit of a risk doing it like this, but I'm gonna try it. I've got this egg relatively low in temperature, and that's the point. We're gonna cook it dirty, but we're not cooking it super, super hot. So we'll see how we go with that. Um, and it may not work. Um, I've got a few of these, so if I break one, it will be, I don't wanna do it, but we'll try. Uh, anyway, back to Mark and Dingley Dale pork. So the day we cooked these pork ribeyes, we also cooked some beef ribeyes. And um, what was interesting was, people really couldn't tell the difference if they were blindfolded between a beef steak and a pork steak cooked dirty, cooked medium rare, uh, cooked dirty on the egg. And those three, this is how much this way? Uh, just under a kilo, 900 grams. So 300, 300 gram steaks each, uh, eight pound 91 total. Um, if you were doing um, this with beef, it would be three times, if not four times that cost. Um, this is price per kilo, 10 quid a kilo. So yeah, just under. Um, ribeye is currently in, in I get, I'm guessing around 35 pound a kilo. So this is, yeah, a third of or less. Okay, so we're gonna cook those. Right, let's dive in and just turn these peppers. We'll have a look at them. 
So it's starting to char, which is exactly what we want. Oops, just taking the skin off that one. Look at those charring, starting to loosen up a bit, which is what we want. The beetroot will be doing the same. So we'll just turn those. Oh yes. You see that I'm going to lose them. They're going to turn into charcoal. They look like charcoal by the end of this. So we'll pop those in. The onions I've already turned once. I'll turn them again. Okay. Right. So, Helena, any questions? No. No questions yet. Perfect. Right. Let's get on to the next cook. Get these going. These will be ready a little bit early, but that'll be fine. Some beautiful heritage carrots. Um, so I'm going to take these. Yeah, they're not. They're you know they're all different colours. I'm going to take the tops off, uh, and then we're going to cook those dirty. So let's just take. Leave a little bit on there. Now, if you've got finer ones, though, you know, the really fine ones, that works really well as well. Uh, what you don't want is the super fat, chunky ones because they'll just take too long to cook. Okay, so we've got our carrots. Oops. If we go over, got the Mini Max, a little bit warm. Let's turn it down. Thought I'd use this for a change. We're, we're, uh, we're going away in a couple of days, so we're going to take the Mini Max with us. So all I've got in here, and what you want to see, just a bit of fire, and we're going to pop these carrots into the charcoal. Um, exactly the same as we would do with the uh, with the peppers and so on. We're going to keep turning those, char get them just charred up a little bit, and then I am going to use a, a, a cast iron um, a skillet with these, and we're going to cook them afterwards we're going to chop them up and then cook them with some uh, uh, some pepper some salt some balsamic vinegar um, some maple syrup uh, and a little bit of oil and we're going to cook them up make them into a lovely sticky gooey salad um, so it'd be delicious right oh okay who's got the hangovers this morning then Helen Jay how did the golf go Jay that's what we want to know. I played twice this week and it was awful. I've got a new set of clubs and I can't hit them for toffee. Anyway. Oh dear, that's no good. <laughs> oh well, well done Alex. So two, two stinking hangovers, so good. Uh, we're all good in this house, although I fell asleep pretty early, I think, uh, so on the sofa. <laughs> Question from Karen. When cooking dirty, can you place the convector over? When you're cooking dirty, can you uh, place the convector over the top? Absolutely. Um, it'll just make it more awkward to then get in and see what you're doing. Um, but I don't see why not. Um, yeah, that would work. That would work perfectly well. Never done it, but yes, don't see why not. We'll try it. Never done it. So yeah, why not? Let's have another look at our peppers. Charring up nicely, a little bit more. Oop. I'm going to move that one over a bit and swap them over. That one—it's getting it's a little bit warmer where that one is. Any more questions? Okay. Hello. Okay. Perfect. All right. So let's get on to this lamb. We'll get it once those peppers come off. We'll get it out there. So uh, I have this lamb. I want to rest it afterwards so we'll get it on and cooking. I'm going to put my meter straight into the middle. The key with these is the electronics is in the front end. Didn't wash my hands yet, must do that. Key is the electronics is in the front end so you need that inside the meat to protect it. So it goes right into the middle and we'll leave that end poking out and we're gonna put it on this egg. So I'll move uh, those, move that. And now I haven't got it roaring so um, I want that there. So um, hopefully my meter should be all right in there, but we will find out. It's sort of nestled between those two bits of beetroot at the moment. But you can see already we get a nice bit of smoke in there. Um, let me just wash my hands. So it's a good time for questions if there are any. Uh, nice. uh, Matt Franco did the meatballs yesterday. They were delicious. Oh, Franco doing the meatballs. Um, Love them. Great. That's the Albondigas. Uh, or Albon oh, Albondigas. I should get this. Is Carlos on? Yes, he is on. Morning, Carlos. Played uh, golf very well this week, unlike me. Mark is 
Newcastle. Mark from Newcastle. Mark from Smoke Fine Food. Yeah. Follow him on Instagram. He did a beautiful gnocchi and aubergine dish last night. It looked amazing. Uh, need to need to give that one a go. He puts all his recipes on his website, so uh, check him out. He and also delivers has delivered my classes up there when we're not in lockdown. So. Uh, where did I get the sink from? I will link it on the page. I've said that every week. Write that down, Helen, and I'll add it to the page. Um, I can't even remember the name of it now. It, it's just plugged in with a, with a hose pipe, uh, a food grade hose pipe, which you can buy from Amazon. Um, so yeah, our tap is way, way, way over there, but yeah, it works just cold. And all the empty, all the dirty water just drops straight out the back onto the garden. I used to put it into a bucket and pour it away, but it seems to have back. Right, so this egg, well, according to the front of this, it's a bit low now, it's dropped down. It's just coming back. It was about 150 degrees, so I'm not going nuclear with this. I'm going fairly slow. This Mini Max with the carrots that we'll have a look at, a little bit faster. These are just starting to, can you see, just starting to brown. It's cool enough that I can actually get in there and touch them. So this is about 200-ish. We're getting some nice, you don't want it to be too hot. Um, these black ones, black carrots, you can hardly tell, but what we're trying to do is cook the carrots and all, uh, and give them a bit of color on the outside. We'll, we'll um, go for the bend test with them. That's how you'll know when they're done. Um, and we'll move those around a bit, so might open that up. Um, ignore this thermometer as well. Um, I know it's off, um, it's an old one, but my, my Mini Max this morning, I opened it up and took the gasket off, um, the one I used that's normally over there. Um, I'd obviously glued it together with some uh, some uh, some fat last time or some cheese or whatever we cooked over there last time on the cook. Uh, and when I went like that, I pulled the top level off. So it needs a new gasket. So I just grabbed um, one of the others over there. Um, I bought some last year. Um, so this one I know is off. It came from Ro Rosemary Schrager's cooking school. And I don't know what they did to the, the thermometers, but they're all, I know they're all off and need calibrating because they're all pointing way, way um, in the wrong direction when it's cold. Um, so, right, let's have a look at these. Oh, what I did forget to tell you on the, the meter, I've set it up on here. So that meter is um, set up, it's still rising. It's not moaned yet. Um, but what it's saying is our lamb, um, I've set it up to cook a piece of lamb. Our lamb is at 13 degrees. Um, we're trying to get to 60. I might knock that down a bit. Um, and at the moment it's saying the egg is 118. I know it's hotter than that, but that's because it's, it's taken a little while to warm that probe thermometer up. Um, wherever the end of that probe is, it, that's what it's reading. If you've got it nestled between two bits of beetroot, it's reading the temperature of the beetroot. If you've got it, you know, um, when you put a piece of meat in there, it will have um, air around it um, and it might be a, a little bit cold. Um, so uh, it'll always read cooler than that, than the dome thermometer for quite a while until it's warmed up. Yes. No, do I use, so the question was, do I use 100% new charcoal um, every time I cook? The answer is no. Uh, I added a little bit of charcoal to each of these, but all of it, it was old charcoal. Um, I added probably less than a handful to each of them this morning because I had hardly done um, much cooking on them before. So no, this is second, second, third, fourth, fifth time charcoal. Um, I haven't emptied the charcoal out probably for, three months so there'd be a lot of little bits in there but I have got the stainless steel fire baskets in all of my eggs um, so I don't know if I can grab this one just to show you I mean they're all gonna look like that um, now I need to wash my hands again um, but you can then just shake it out and all the ash will drop out rather than in your egg um, so if you haven't got a stainless steel fire basket um, they are fabulous and they really do help with airflow Do we have um, the Conways on? Uh, no, I haven't seen them. Okay. Well, we're going to give a shout out because they probably will uh, watch this. So I'll finish doing my hands. They'll probably watch this afterwards. But the Conways in God Manchester, um, it is Neve's 11th birthday today. So happy birthday, Neve. Happy birthday, Neve. Hopefully, you're having a lovely day. 
Light. It's one of Lexi's, Lexi's friends. Um, and you had Lexi on, on the show or on the cook a few weeks ago doing, what did we cook? Chocolate something, no doubt. Chocolate pots. Right, let's have a look at these peppers. Looking lovely, we'll do a little bit more on that. Oh, they're softening up beautifully. Same with the beetroot. They're doing faster than I thought they would, which is good. That's fine. We'll put them over there. There's one tucked under there. Oh yeah, that's looking good. My um, thermometer hasn't moaned yet, but we will find out. Meter do, let's turn him over, let's have a look. So, get there. So you can see we're starting, shouldn't put on there. That's how I stuck the last one together. Starting to get a bit of crispness on there. Um, so we'll pop it on like that. And we're doing a gentle cook on that one. Let's have a look at our carrots, which are going to be up. Yep, we'll turn, turn again. Oh, they're looking lush. You see, getting a bit, oh, and starting to bend. No, I haven't got Chef's asbestos fingers. I'm just being, it's just not too, too hot. Ow, he says. <laughs> Is that right on cue? Mm-hmm. I'll move them around a bit, get some of these fatter ones on the out, in the middle where it's slightly warmer today. Right. So, question, Helena, you said. Yeah, um, so Steve George has got his half moon. Yep. Do, does he need to season them? No. So, Steve George um, has two half moon baking stones that look like that, but clean. Um, uh, do you need to season them? No, just get on with it, use them. They're uh, ceramic, you can just uh, use them. Mine go black over time, as do the pizza stones. That one's uh, not very black, but they can go quite dark. That dark colour on them um, is just where the oils and fats have got into them. Um, it makes them sort of non-stick, so there's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, but no, you don't need to season those, Steve, so uh, yeah, get on with it. Um, morning, Steve, by the way. Where are you today? Are you in the Phoenix this morning? Or are you... It's not got a hangover. It's not got a hangover. Huh. Um, anyway, lives in my village, drinks in the same pubs. Anyway. So, Rich and Alice, um oh so um officially no i can't suggest an alternative because i do do a lot of work with big green egg however um if you read about the big G egg genius you'll find out it's made from uh it's made by flame boss uh, and uses the same software as flame boss um, it's modeled on a product called the flame boss 400 um which is identical looking um, the Egg Genius, by the way, I've heard isn't coming in until I think November now. Um, I had an update from Big Green Egg on a lot of the products. Um, so yeah, it will be, might be November. So um, Flame Boss 400, the only difference between the Egg Genius and the Flame Boss 400 is the Egg Genius can have multiple meat probes. But when I've never used one with multiple meat probes uh, and I do a lot of cooking, one meat probe's normally enough and then you can always uh, get yourself a meter plus uh, as another meat probe. Um, you only need one probe then to control the temperature. So um, that's my unofficial answer. Um, <laughs> otherwise, there are loads of different products out there. Um, look them up. Um, yeah. Uh, so the ones to avoid, or the ones I've, I've, I've tested loads. The ones I don't like are Smartfire. Um, it works nicely, but the software interface is shocking. Um, don't like that. Um, if you're into your electronics, you can make one that's called a heater meter. Um, uh, it's great fun. I've made a few of those. They work, work a treat. Um, there are other versions of Flame Boss. So there's a 500, which is the, the next one up, which is great. 300 is good. Um, anyway, yeah, talk to me offline. Right. I'm going to take these peppers. Uh, yeah, I'm going to take those out. So, I'm going to take them out, pop them in that bowl for a second, just let them cool a bit before I put them in the plastic bag. Let's have a look at our piece of lamb. Oop. So, it's warmer over there, I can see, so I'm going in over there. I don't want to turn the whole thing up and, 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 and get it really hot. Um, our beetroots are going nicely. Now, this is a bit of an experiment on the beetroots. 
Our onions are looking great. Perfect. So our lamb is currently showing 19 degrees internal. Right, back to our carrots. Cooking nicely. Can you see they're starting to blister on the outside? So you don't, as I keep saying, you don't have to go super, super hot to cook things dirty. They will work. You know, this egg is just ticking over nicely with that. You can see the charcoal's just, I've spread, spread it fire out a bit. So, right, talking of hot though, we're gonna go and get hot with those ones over there. I need my salt. So, let's talk about how you would cook a dirty steak. So I'm gonna get this egg warmed up a bit. So we'll open it up a bit more than we've had it. We'll go in. And if you look in there, Andy, I'm going to get it going a bit more in a minute. But all I'm going to do is rake the coals. What I want to do is burn the uh, not the worst of the ash off. Um, so you can see this one's not quite up to the top of the firebox. Um, that was just because I was lazy and didn't put too much charcoal in there. Um, I'm going to open it up. We're going to get this to about 200, 250 degrees. So reasonably warm. Um, so let's have a look at these steaks. And I will have to wash my hands. So, uh, some nice pork there. Uh, you can see they're relatively thick. Um, what we want to do is char the outside of them a little bit. Um, so all we're going to do is treat these to some salt. This will be interesting because Andy doesn't like pork. That's not true. She doesn't like nuked pork. No. Is that right? Exactly. She didn't know she liked pork until she came and stayed with us uh, during lockdown and we cooked her a joint of pork and it was medium rare. She went, oh. oh, it was stunning. It there was stunning. So now I'm going to wash my hands because obviously I've been touching those raw. So any more questions, Helena? No. How are we doing for time? We need to get us. 11.57. Get a move on, don't we? Those won't take long and then a little bit of a rest. Those are going to come together. I'm going to turn up the mini max because I want those carrots to go a little bit faster. Feel the heat coming through. Check on these. Oh, we need those in the bag now. And cool down enough. So just a plastic bag, pop the peppers in. And what that will do is it will steam them in the bag. And the point of that, just loosely do that, the point of that is it will then help release the skins. So we're going to take the skins off and then we're just going to cut them up and make them into a nice salad. Let's have a look at our nice bit of rump. There we go. Get that over. It's cooking nicely. This is about to moan, I think, the meter. No, no, we're good. Yes, Mini Max Convector should be back in stock on October the 2nd. Friday, October the 2nd is when the container's due. Uh, that goes for the large Convector, that goes for the large Big Green Egg as well. So all the key bits should come in that day. Um, there may be limited amounts of them, uh, but with more following shortly after. So um, if you're desperate for one and, uh, and haven't already ordered, um, give me a shout. Um, during next week and we can get one ordered for you uh, and pre-order it so yes right so you can see these are steaming nicely it's exactly what we want that egg is warming up we just keep on the just want this to start going a bit hotter we'll have a look at our carrot sorry Andy I'm all over the show aren't I yeah, yeah you're making on. me look unprofessional keep you on your toes can you see they're starting to bend they're starting to get cooked they're hot as well some of these are done so what i'm going to do take these bits off sorry it's just got some of the carrot tops in some of these bits are done we'll get them in there those two can go might actually bring the steaks over here and do them on this one I'm going to do that. Oh. Go on. 
Have big green eggs stopped selling? No, I think they will be do for the premium mahogany table. Uh, they're out of stock. I think they will be doing more of them, um, but they are out of stock. So I believe they will come back. Um, if you drop me an email, I can get a, a, an official answer from, from the guys in the office. Um, so yeah, right, well that's all doing. Get rid of these carrot tops. Um, if they're looking really nice, these carrot tops, you can use them in a salad. For a sec. So, do the first few and then we'll get those last two. But all we're going to do with these carrots is chuck them into chunks. Crosswise, do these. Okay, get those and then we'll pop them in our pan. I'll just go and get the other two because these are nice and soft and they're going to cook a little bit more. Right, so take them off. Um, cut them into about inch sections. Get them into your pan. Right, I'm gonna go and get my ingredients. I need this. Right, you're going to put some oil on, a bit of olive oil, a good couple of tablespoons, good glugs of that. We're going to go in with some pepper. Now, cooking anything dirty, pepper burns um, uh, relatively low temperature, so, um, so don't use pepper on anything until, our, until you've cooked it if you're doing it dirty. Does that make sense? Uh, some balsamic vinegar. Nice and gloopy. Uh, we're going to go, that's about two tablespoons. We're going to go in with about four tablespoons of maple syrup. Or everything you've got left. <laughs> and about a teaspoon of cumin seeds. Now you could sprinkle those in, that'll do me. I'm just going to get a spoon. Come on, let's get hot. So we'll give those a zhuzh round, get them nice, oh, it smells delicious. Now, with this dish, um, don't overdo it, because what will happen is you'll burn, put the carrot in there, you'll end up burning the maple syrup. Um, if you haven't got maple syrup, honey works fine, but equally, you can burn it. Now, I might put this in the large, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put this one in the large, which is slightly lower temperature, sorry, Andy. Do the steaks in the mini max which is hotter just to save some time so they're going in i'm going to shut this down to about 200 180 200 um, it'll take a little while to get back there we can take the steaks i'm going to do them in the mini max how are we doing 35 on the lamp i'm lucky if we get there so um key to if you're doing dirty get your fire not going nicely just give it a, a knock just to knock the worst of the ash off and then just go straight in with your steaks now i know to some of you that sounds ridiculous um, but you've got to try it um, and pork pork ribeyes great way of trying it a lot cheaper so we're going to get those in there let those get going. Right. In the bin. Give these a rinse. Oops. Put over my shorts. So let's go and do these while we're waiting. What have we got in here? Oh lamb let's just flip it again just keep flipping it what you'll see when i'm flipping it over 
is it's getting nice brown on the outside, but there's no char, you know, there's relatively little charcoal sticking to it. People worry about it, there's a bit there. Um, don't worry too much. I'm going to move these beetroot all out to the side for now, just to sit, turn our onions over. beginning to soften nicely oh you can see it on this one this starting to ooze um, out the sides right so let's get these going would you do fillet steak dirty no reason why not might add some flavor to it um, you'll know I'm not a huge fan of fillet steak um, although it's a lot better value now than it used to be um, but yeah fillet steak is uh, very expensive, nice and tender, but very little flavour. Um, so this would add some flavour to it. Um, but what you should be able to do with these, I'm not going to be 100%. percent we'll take the seeds out first. Hut, hut, hut. And then you should be able to get this skin to come off. If you've gone over, and you, you'll have a bit more time, but um, you can peel the skin off then. A bit like tomato. Once it's been cooked, it will take the skin off. I'm failing miserably here just need to get underneath it, there we go. Um, get this skin, peel it off. These could have done with a little bit more to be fair. Um, but you get the idea, which is the important bit. There we go. So once you've done that, then you can slice it. Bit of skin's all right anyway. We'll get it in there. I'm going to pop it in a bowl to cool down. Do the other one quickly. There you go, that one's much easier, it's better. You see, it's peeling straight off. That egg on the right is going. Yeah, it's cool, that's our steak. So Helen is saying the egg on the right is going um, good. It's got our steak on it, it's got some fat on it. You are going to get smoked because um, you have. Um, you know you've got the fat directly on the on the coals now the reason you cook dirty is exactly that to get that fat on the coals it adds to the flavor and the beauty of it is that that fat vaporizes and goes straight back into the meat and gives it that flavor so you'll get a much more smoky meaty flavor with a dirty cooked steak than you will a non-dirty cooked steak so give it a try all right let's get those in there doesn't matter if it's got a few seeds in. I'm just going to get a wipe. Yeah. That's all right. I'll let you. Yeah. Right, we'll go and have a look. And then we'll come back and finish this. So, you know. So, can you see? Nice smoke. That is the fat within that meat uh, vaporizing, going straight back in. So, we'll open. Yeah. <laughs> Those who know me, you now you'll see there's little bits of charcoal stuck to it, but as soon as you turn it over, you can just m remove them. So, um, and as with cooking any steaks, um, I'm going to do this to touch. So, um, take these bits off. Can you see you've got some nice caramelization on there now. Swap these two over because that one's cooking a bit faster they're looking good and the way I do it is by touch these still feel pretty rare this end one's gone a bit more but if you I think I showed you this before so rare you prod that bit don't squeeze just touch them together medium rare medium well done let's go and stir those carrots sorry Andy end one keep you on your toes starting to bubble starting to get all oh, that that cumin smell what we want to do is caramelize that a little bit you just see it bubbling here nicely and that will make those taste delish right back here Andy. with what oh another five minutes or so yeah five minutes right a little bit of garlic we're going to chuck in with these so I'll, uh, take piece of garlic, take the ends off, wash it, take the peel off, 
There we go. Right. Just go and grab my salt. So no one's left over here. A little bit of salt in there. Lovely. Straight in. Uh, to this, I'm going to add a little bit of red wine vinegar. A little bit of olive oil. Just have a bit of parsley. Just for colour. It's not one of my favourite flavours, but... A bit of rough chopped parsley. Do it with my hands. There we go, that looks stunning. So let's put that on the table. Go and wash these. And then we'll get those pork ribeyes out. Little stir of our carrots. Oh yeah, we're there. Come and have a look Andy. It's boiling away beautifully. So these are going to be lovely and sweet with that balsamic, with all that maple syrup. Gorgeous colour. Yeah, got that lovely, you know, char on the outside with flavour. They're going to have the cumin to give it that earthy depth to it. They're going to be stunning. Another minute on those. Let's have a look at our ribeyes. That one's still. Sort of flip them. Ooh. I'm going to get in there and probe them for once. 44, 45, 48. I'm going to take these off in a, literally a couple of minutes. 52, that one's up there. Um, 57 is where I'm aiming for, medium rare. Um, this one's beeping at me to tell me I've got five minutes left, 51 degrees. So my meter is still working, even though I'm cooking dirty. Let's flip that over. That is looking stunning. I'm going to pull that now because that will go up those last few degrees um, as it rests. So, a bit of foil. Take it off. I'm just going to check it with my thermopen. Um, always check it when you've got a meter. Uh, 45, 46, yeah, it's going to be a Oh yeah, it's going to be stunning. Always check it with, the, with the, your thermopen if you're using a meter. Um, point of that is that you might have put your meter not in necessarily the perfect place. So we'll take that over there. We've got that resting. I've got the um, meter sticking out the side. So I'll put that over on my board. That's the lamb. Yeah, to 57 I'm aiming for. I like it pink, always good. So it knows it's resting. These steaks are coming off. So, I've probably told you this before. When you take them off, you can just take the, all you'll get is big bits of charcoal sticking to them, but take them off and then rest them individually. Stick them out the way. Sorry Andy. <laughs> Keep you on your toes. Um, if you rest your steak, stacked up, effectively they're all going to cook each other. Look at that, nice bit of char. Now these could be beef in exactly the same way as I've said, but try it first with some pork, a bit of pork ribeye. And we'll get this last one off, this one's going to be a little bit less done I think, which will be mine. Oh yeah. Give me a little bit pink in the middle. I like that. So we're going to let those rest for a couple of minutes. I'll take them over and then don't stack them up. They'll cook each other. Just leave them individually. Let them rest and let that muscle texture uh, relax. Right, beetroot. That one's definitely done. We'll get him out there. 
not beetroot, sorry, onions. That one needs a little bit more. It's quite a biggie. That one's definitely done. And let's have a go with these beetroot. I'll grab two of the big ones. Put them in there. Yeah. Thank you, Andy. Don't forget that dinky one. Yep. Yeah, I've got the dinky one. <clears throat> right, let's take those over. Yeah, we'll get the carrots off. Right. My table is looking a bit busy. Let's take one plate out of the way for now. Get my trivet in place, ready for the um, carrots. These new gloves are spot on, working perfectly. Oh yes. Have a look at those. Nice and sticky oh, and gooey and oh, these are. By the way, these are from a. These are not my recipe. These were from a book uh, by a guy called DJ Barbecue. And uh, yeah, they're perfect. Right, what else do I need? Oh, I've got a little treat. Right, let's serve up a couple of bits first. So, let's have a look at this lamb that's been off, off the most. So, hopefully, we we'll keep that juice, take our meter out. Uh, grain's coming up and through, so I'll try and cut across. Just about pink in the middle, nice. Oh, you can never tell very well on the camera. That's perfect. Mm. Looks lush. Right, let's leave it that. Get that on a board over there. There you go, you'll be able to see in the sun better. Get one of these beetroot. Oh, look at those. Now, I've got a spoon. This is going to be messy. A little spoon, the idea is you're going to go in. Just take the middles out. I'm not very good at this, but... And then we could, if we wanted to put them in a bowl, we could put dressing on them. I'm just going to put them straight onto um, that board. I'm going to chop it a little bit. Might stain my board a bit, but who cares? Ah, hot, hot, hot. Right, it's incredibly warm. And with them, I'm going to put a bit of chilli. So I've got some chilies I grew in the garden. If Sue Quail's on, we ate your chilies. Uh, the chilies you dropped off for us, we ate those the other day. Lush. So a little bit of chilli to go on there. Uh, and then another little special. That's there. I am a messy cook. A little bit of goat's cheese. Okay, it's not nitrogen frozen, but it is a great accompaniment to beetroot. Get that over there, we'll put a bit more on in a minute. Uh, let's have a look at one of those steaks, which was the one that I said, oh, this one's all right. So we'll go in with our pork steak. In fact, no, we're gonna do this. Oh, yeah. no, I don't. What? No, I'm just saying. What? What's going on? Mrs. Meat Smoke Fire is telling lies. Oh. <laughs> she, she says saying? that I love goat's cheese. Yeah, I... she, Andrea's oh. not a fan of goat's cheese. No, not can't at do all. Goat's cheese. Right, where's that? Um, I have got a little treat here. Let's oh. see if this works. Um, this is a, some butter that I uh, mixed with some enduja. So enduja is a um, got stuff everywhere on them. Um, enduja is a um, Italian soft salami so i'm going to get a piece of that put it on top of our steak and i'll be back in a second dandy grape shoes on it yeah. oh, well, it's got a spot 
spice to it. And then just to make it even more dirty, a piece of burning charcoal to melt. That's cool, yeah. That butter and that endusia into the into the steak. So I'll get another steak and I'll chop it up so you can see what it looks like. Got stuff everywhere now. Someone's just joined late and they've said, why isn't it raining? And I've just told them, don't do it <laughs> So we'll take some of this over. Pop it over on our plate. We'll get a bit more endusia on that. Is that the lamb? No, that's the pork. I'll we'll go and get you another bit in a second. So this will start to melt in there. Bit of charcoal needed. What have I forgotten? Is it all out? Yeah, it's all out. Perfect. Oop. Get that on top of the butter. You can. <laughs> Franco has an appreciation get the of your mess. Yeah, I'm, I'm not the I'm not the cleanest chef, so get some of that juice over there as well. How's that? Oh, onion! Get the onions off. Oh yeah, bit of onion. So I'm just going to slice down the middle. Oh, I love the them. onions. Come and pick up my pot. So, I should really put the carrots on there as well, but we'll just. Please don't, because you just make the board messy and I. Okay, bit. I'll just pick up the board as it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's get over here where you can see it. So we have some dirty lamb topside, dirty onions, dirty beetroot with goat's cheese and chili, some dirty uh, pork steaks with hot charcoal. I turn it over. Uh -oh. Yeah, I know I'm dripping. Doesn't matter. We'll get it. Um, and then some dirty peppers with a little vinaigrette. What do we think? Everything dirty. Pop it back on there. Everyone's liking it. So we've got some suggestions for some future. Cool. Well, go so for it, people. We've got loads of wasps today. Monkfish curry. I do do a monkfish curry. Curry. So, yeah, we could do a monkfish curry. Uh, venison. Because we're going into autumn with venison. A... Did that suggestion happen to come from um, Rubens? No. Oh, Ruben. Even not Rubens. Um, a veggie main alongside uh, your main cook. <laughs> a veggie main alongside my main cook, okay. A veggie main. I didn't. Yeah. yeah. And then, is that from Beth? Is no, Beth on? Okay, no. no. Um, so Beth um, is, uh, Beth is, uh, I've done vegan classes for, but she also cooks meat, to that, meat and stuff. Today she's doing rotisserie squid, so I'm really interested to see that. And someone else has said he's doing a whole roast. Whole roast, yeah, it just takes a little bit longer than 45 minutes, that's the only issue. Uh, but we'll see what we can do. And I've said we're probably going to do Christmas cake at some point. Oh yes, we're definitely going to do Christmas cake, so I'm going to try some of this. And uh, Dee has just said uh, mm. Christmas pudding. Oh. I haven't done that yet, but I am desperate to try it. Oh, Steve George says an Asian street grill. Asian street grill, yeah, we could do that. Sorry, eating the pork. The pork is delicious, by the way. And the lamb's looking amazing. I need some mint sauce on that. And some of this I need a filter. Oh, that's good. That works. Nick, Sorry. just move the wipes out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those carrots. DJ Barbecue, it's in his book. Um, I think you put them on your website. They're on my website. They are delicious. Oh, let's try this. Garlicky. 
that's good too. Finger food today. Anyway, okay. Well, we're slightly over time, 10 minutes over. So um, there will not be one of these next week, not unless, no, there won't be I one of these. Will. Um, we're not here next week, so um, we're not gonna do this then. So two weeks time, we'll be back. We'll come back with something autumn-y or maybe something fishy. I do like the idea of the monkfish um, curry, um, especially since I'll get to practice and take photos while we're down in Cornwall um, with plentiful monkfish. So um, yeah, um, any comments, you know, feedback, let us know. Uh, tag photos. Tag photos, yeah, send us your photos and tag us in them, we'd love to see them. Um, if you need to buy anything, well, bigger things we won't we're not going to ship the rotisseries during while we're away um, but we will um, take with us some thermopens and some meters and it did survive the cook so that's great um, oh. is that nice yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah just get hold of us and uh, anything big green egg uh, while, we're, while we are away do feel free to contact us um, via our email even ring whatever um, late mornings are probably best or mid mornings 10 onwards are, are, are normally good after that we tend to go off walk, doing some big walks and stuff but um, hopefully you've enjoyed this we have hopefully the weather will stay like this it's not going to we're going on holiday um, but enjoy yourselves and let us know what you're doing on your rigs so thank you once again team thank you to Andy and Helena uh, thank you everyone for watching speak to you soon Sorry.